Hello and welcome to designing for Azure App Service solution. Firstly, uh, within this lecture, we are going to talk about how to design Azure App Service solutions and when to take the service and types of these services we are going to learn. Uh, also, we are going to work with App Service deployment slots for continuous deployment and also some kind of authentication authorization options all of that stuff we are going to work on it within this lecture um, but before i begin you first have to understand azure app service is a pass service meaning azure app service is a platform as a service uh, hosting model and you have to focus on the web development and api logics and as you will handle the complete infrastructure to run and to scale your web application that's what you have to you know take out uh, before we start so let's first understand what exactly is your app service so if you're quite new and you have not seen any of the lectures i would recommend you to you know go through the application services but just to give you an overview azure app service is a http based service that can uh, help you out to build and host web applications uh, or maybe a background jobs or mobile backends or rest apis can be hosted with the web app service and app service lets you uh, give you the programming language of your own choice so that you could use the way you wanted or different type of programming languages and it can offer you automatic scaling and high availability also uh, that's the great part uh, with this but you have to choose something called app service plan which we are going to talk on this lecture also a little bit uh, and uh, that's more about the designing part we would be not touching on it and app service will enable app service will enable automated deployment from github or maybe azure devops or any kind of for that matter any kind of you know git repository so this is the flow chart that we could talk on this uh, lecture let's say if you are trying to develop any kind of http based http based service then you could you know think whether it's going to be a migration or building a new one so when we talk about the migration that's nothing but a lift and shift uh, if it is a migrating a new one or creating a new one let's say if it is a creating a new one you're trying to build you do you require a full control then you would end up with a virtual machine but if you're looking for high performance computing workload then you would be ending up as your bad services but in case if you are looking for micro services architecture um, then it might go to the containers but in case if it's not the case then you would be going for app service again if it is a lift and shift or migration you have to think in this direction for do you need to containerize this entire application or you want to host as a some kind of you know api or web uh, application or mobile backend backends or background jobs kind of an you know, application then if that's the case uh, you will be ending with azure app service this is the flow that designs your azure app service when to choose okay and now let's also talk about uh, some other benefits of the app services so there are uh, types of uh, app services you need to know and they are common benefits so when we talk about the common benefits you will have the development in multiple languages and frameworks and you could integrate deployment and management with secure endpoints can be possible there's a common benefit and also you can scale a global scale with high availability because the infrastructure would be taken care by Azure and you have the option to scale it and you could build uh, you no need to build any kind of infrastructure uh, specific things like a load balancing or traffic management because it is a built-in within your app services so you have a full flexibility on load balancing and traffic management point of view and uh, these are the some of the app uh, service uh, benefits and these are the ideal choice for hosting any kind of you know, web application when we talk about Azure app service cost uh, you pay for the Azure compute resources 
your app uses while it processing your request so you would be only uh, paying the cost for when it is processing the request so the cost is based on something called an app service plan uh, which you could you know choose when you are trying to create your app service so the app apps will be uh, interlinked with any of the plan like you know app service plan so app service plan will determine how much hardware is uh, dedicated for your hosting requirements for example uh, you could determine uh, whether it's a dedicated or a shared hardware and how much memory is reserved that all depends on the app service plan you could check out the other lectures which uh, talks about in detail about the app service plan but uh, in general 305 exam specific you need to know already the app service planning and the one of the pre requirement right and uh, this lecture will focus on the designing aspects Azure app service plans can be scaled up and scaled down any point of time and for example you could even start your app service plan with a free application or a free app service plan and you don't need to pay anything but when you want to add your custom DNS name or, or the web application or you want to you know, scale up then you could you know go and move your app service plan to standard tire uh, or maybe uh, shared services based on your requirements and let's also talk about the app service deployment slots that are available if you look at the devops today's azure devops or developer service for support they plan for work and collaborate on the code specific developments and building their uh, applications so whenever they possible um, they are looking for a continuous deploying your code and using the deployment slots would be a great choice for them uh, for example um, you might have a master stage development and if they committed they could move to the dev slot or they could also from dev to they can promote to by committing uh, to stage and then you know they can move to the master slot and then they could move to the production also based on the uh, slots that are available we call it as a deployment slots these are in other way you could easily swap uh, from a production to master or any others uh, deployment slots so that um, within the fraction of seconds the entire application can be easily moved uh, to one build to another build and that makes easy for your devops guys so far we talked about app service plans and also we talked about the deployment slots for easily uh, moving from one uh, build to another build like a production swapping all that capabilities now let's talk about the authentication and authorization in terms of the security when you are trying to design as your app service so consider uh, considerations are really required when you are trying to implement a secure solution for authentication when i talk about authentication it is signing the users and when i talk about authorization uh, i'm talking about the providing access to secure your data so there are two different things one is authentication and authorization authentication talks about the sign-in process uh, whom to you know grant and authorization will talk about providing a secure data to those users so that way you could secure it so these are the uh, these can take basically a significant effort when you're trying to you know implement any secure solution so as your app service will provide your built-in authentication and authorization capabilities so sometimes we also refer this as the easy auth and so you can sign in users and access data by writing minimal or no code is required in fact if you are trying to develop any application you might have know if you're the devops guy or developer you know that authentication authorization options are built-inly available when you're trying to develop any azure application service so it does not need any additional code some of the benefits that we could talk about would be the azure app service provides a built-in capabilities for your web app or apis you no need to implement the authentication yourself similarly it's a built-in directly uh, into your platform so you don't need any language or sdk or uh, security expertise 
or even any code to utilize those and you can integrate with multiple sign-in providers for example identity management site like Azure Active Directory or Facebook or Google or Twitter so you could easily uh, integrate with multiple sign-in providers so the built-in authentication feature for Azure App Service is the same as uh, same even for Azure Functions also in case if you are looking for a serverless application security side. So these are the things that you need to know. Look into the consideration for authentication and authorization. These are the great benefits I would say. Now let's also have a look on when to consider uh, when to consider the like web applications or APIs or web jobs or mobile apps. So as we discussed in the beginning of this lecture slide, Azure App Service is an HTTP based service that can uh, help you to build and host your web applications or background jobs or mobile backends and even rest full APIs. Now let's try to understand when to use the web applications and the APIs or web jobs or mobile apps. So beginning with the web app, you can choose uh, either Windows or Linux to host the operating system. At the same time, it's going to support your ASP.NET. I mean, it supports a various different uh, programming languages like ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, or Java, Ruby, .NET, uh, Node.js, or PHP, Python, all of that are available. And let's have a look on APIs, when to use. So it's like much like hosting a website, you can build REST based APIs, that's a web APIs by using your choice of languages and the framework. You get the full uh, Swagger support and ability to package them and also you could publish your APIs in Azure Marketplace. So the produced apps can consume from any HTTP or HTTPS clients also. You have the full flexibility from API app side. And now we will also look at the web jobs. So web jobs are as it say it is showing here scheduled or triggered. It means you can use the web shops feature to run a program or a script and the programs are example which includes the java php python node uh, node.js uh, and the scripts examples includes like you can run any kind of batch or cmd files or powershell or bash files uh, i'm talking about a bash uh, web shops can be scheduled and can be triggered uh, based on the schedule uh, schedule times so web jobs are often used to run background tasks uh, which are part of your application logics so that's where you could use so you have the wide variety of uh, language choice as well as the api choice and you could you know package them you can build in the azure uh, marketplace and also you have the f flexibility within your application to run a program or a script and you could schedule and you could trigger it now let's have a look on mobile apps so using the mobile apps feature app service can quickly build and track your ios or android applications with just a few steps in azure portal so you could uh, even store the mobile application data in a cloud based sql database or authenticate your customers against common social provide uh, providers for example google or twitter or facebook you could do that uh, and also you could send a push notification the notification that comes to your phones or uh, kind of thing also you could push it and you could execute custom uh, back in logics uh, maybe uh, c sharp or node.js by uh, kind of you know languages you could use and you could uh, execute those back in logics so on mobile app side there is a sdk support for native ios and android or xamarin and uh, react native app application so you have all that uh, flexibility so i'm gonna actually link up two resources one for the web jobs creation and also authentication authorization from uh, this lecture you please do check out that uh, resources which are available also look at the hosting plans and as your devops and sta staging slots all of that resources i'm gonna link up within this lecture please do check out the resource section of this lecture i hope this is useful for you uh, thank you for watching this we'll catch you in the next lecture